Muy buenos dias, everybody. My name is Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. And today in English Digest, we're going to be discussing food,、Yay. especially food in Spain,、uh, la comida de España.、Uh, that's the subject of today's conversation. Spanish dishes you won't want to miss. Now, even though I speak a little bit of Spanish, I've never been to Spain before. Stephanie, have you been to Spain before? No. When I was、uh, over in Europe as a student in France. We had the chance to go to lots of countries, but you know why I didn't go to Spain? Por qué no?、Uh, it's very hot, and I'm from a hot place. And I talked to my mom about where countries I should see because my mom and dad had been there for a month, and she said, "Well, Spain's kind of more like Arizona. Don't go." So I didn't go. Okay. So, but now. If you're paying attention to all the cooking shows on TV, you know that Spanish food is right up there in the best cuisines of the world. So they're getting a lot of attention, especially towards their food.、Uh, exactly. Usually,、uh, the spotlight shines on French food and Italian food, but、yeah. now the spotlight is shining on Spanish food. True. So we're going to be introducing you to some Spanish dishes that you won't want to miss. So let's get to it, everybody. Let's read the entire contents of today's lesson right now. While Spain's sandy beaches, rich culture, and breathtaking architecture draw a great number of visitors, its fabulous food culture holds a special appeal of its own. Two dishes in particular are renowned across the nation: tasty traditional paella and simple sweet turon. Paella is a symbol of the country's greatest characteristics: passion, variety, color, and social warmth. Originally a poor man's dish, today paella has achieved worldwide fame as a gastronomic phenomenon. Originating from Valencia in southeastern Spain, paella traditionally contained rice as well as whatever meat and vegetables that were readily available. Workers would cook this dish in the fields to make a filling yet nutritious meal to sustain themselves for the laborious hours ahead of them. A proper paella is cooked in a patella, which is Latin for flat pan, and also where the famous dish gets its name. This large, shallow pan allows for all of the ingredients to be pan-seared in one layer and ensures that the rice absorbs all of the stock's savory flavors. Although modern-day paella contains various fresh ingredients, real Spanish paella must include a few essential items. Rice being the most crucial one. The grains for an authentic paella are plump and easily soak up the all-important stock. Traditional meats include rabbit, chicken, snails, and spicy Spanish sausage. Onions and garlic are a must. Artichoke hearts and red bell peppers are often used. And fresh peas, lemons, or beans are typically included as garnishes. Saffron is common in the dish as well, giving it both a vibrant color and an extra flavor. Once a humble food, today palate-pleasing paella has become an international sensation. It is even honored worldwide on March 27th or National Paella Day, which celebrates the classic dish in all its glory. Okay, guys, we're going to be talking about Spanish dishes that you just don't want to miss. They're so delicious.、Uh, one of these, in particular, I've been wanting to try for a long time, and that's the paella.、Mm. Is that right?、Uh, it's kind、yeah. of、uh, weird because it has two L's, and you would think it's pi or pe paella, paella at least. But no, if there are two L's in Spanish, you just have the Y sound, the y. So we're describing Spain as being pretty spectacular here. It's got sandy beaches. It's got a rich culture that goes way back in time, and breathtaking architecture. And all these things draw a great number of visitors. Its fabulous food culture holds a special appeal of its own. Now, like I said, their food has gained a lot of popularity in the last, I would say, ten years, maybe. But、uh, they've got some really great restaurants over there. When you talk about something that's breathtaking, it's exactly what it says. It takes your breath away. So when you look at something beautiful or something. Something pretty amazing. You kind of go,、oh, wow. 
That's breathtaking. Now, architecture is a word that Tom and I often hear people in Taiwan misuse. So be、mm. careful with this word. It does not mean a building. It means the style and design of a building. So you could say, "Oh, this building has Victorian architecture."、Uh, so be careful with that word, and it is not countable. You cannot put an S on it. I hear people talk about architectures、uh, in their neighborhood that are really pretty. No, yeah, those are、uh, just buildings or structures. Build- Building your structures. There you go. Architecture is simply the art or practice of designing and building or constructing buildings. Or the style of the building. You can talk about its architecture,、uh, but don't refer to it as a building itself. Yes, lots of people go to Europe to check out the architecture、yeah. there. I guess you can go to Spain as well. And these certain attractions, the beaches, the culture, the architecture, they all draw lots of people there. They attract lots of visitors to Spain. But it's fabulous food. Food culture holds a special appeal of its own. Something is fabulous when it's really, really great, extraordinary. Something you don't find every day. Fabulous, and this is not just the food itself, but the food culture,、uh, which includes the food itself and how it's served, and restaurants, and the feeling, and、uh, the kinds of、uh, wine you have with the food and、mm-hmm. stuff like that. That's all part of food culture. Yeah, and food culture these days is pretty uh, popular. Uh, you probably heard the word foodie by now, or seen it at least. It's people who really have an interest in gourmet food, not food like a hot dog and a hamburger at <laughs> a fast food place. These guys are searching for cuisine that's. Really exotic and pretty expensive a lot of times too,、uh, but these two dishes. Tom, I'll have Tom say them again. What are the two dishes that are really renowned here?、Uh, well, paella is how you would say it in、uh-huh. Spanish. Although my dictionary says paella is acceptable, I suppose people would pronounce it that way because there are L's there. No, but I've seen this on cooking shows and they do say it correctly, which is exciting. They、uh, say yeah. paella. If you are on a cooking show, you better say it that way, <laughs>、yeah. paella. But sometimes people say paella. Paella, it's probably okay, but、uh, we're going to say paella here, even though it's kind of hard to say. Yeah, we've also got something that's kind of sweet. Maybe it's a dessert or something. It's called turon. Turon. Okay, I, when you have two R's in Espanol, you need to roll those R's. <laughs> I like a dog. The word for dog in Spanish is perro, but、uh, a lot of people can't do that. So if you say turon, that's close enough. My dad cannot roll his R's, and I think maybe some people out. There, I guess their tongue doesn't move that way. But、uh, if you're born in Spain, hopefully all the kids can roll their R's.、Um, anyway, we've got these two dishes, and they're being described as renowned. They're renowned across the nation.、Uh, they're probably renowned across the world in some spots. If you're renowned, you're very famous.、Uh, people have heard about it. Maybe you've been in the news, or people have been talking about it. So these are two dishes that we're going to be focusing on in this particular food unit. Exactly. Okay, paella and turon, the featured foods we're going to be talking about. So let's、uh, talk about paella first. It's a symbol of the country's greatest characteristics: passion, variety, color, and social warmth. So all of those elements are included in paella. It、uh, represents the greatest characteristics of Spain, and those characteristics or special qualities,、yep. uh, the things you use to describe a certain person or place, they include passion. Which is a strong liking for something, and variety, different kinds of things. Color, of course, we like different kinds of colors, and social warmth, people getting along with each other and stuff like that.、Uh, what would be the greatest characteristic or the symbol of the characteristics of Taiwan, like chow tofu, maybe?、Uh, I think of、uh, beef noodles. Oh, that, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah,、that's、I love、one. beef noodles. Has、here. passion, variety, color, stuff like、yeah. that, and social warmth. Yeah, that's similar.、Mm-hmm. And originally a poor man's dish, today paella has achieved worldwide fame. As a gastronomic phenomenon, so originally this dish paella was for the common people,、uh-huh. peasants, farmers, the poor man's dish. But、uh, like in a lot of places, a poor man's dish eventually becomes some kind of delicacy、mm-hmm. in the culture. So、yeah. now it has achieved not only fame in Spain itself, but all over the world. We're describing it as a gastronomic phenomenon.、Mm. I know gastronomic is actually good. But when I see this word, I see the word "gas" there, which kind of makes me think that boy, if I eat this, am I going to have gas? Am I am I going to feel bloated? And I'm gonna am I going to break wind if I eat this? But、uh, that doesn't quite mean that, does it? 
No. In fact, if you actually look up、uh, the noun form of this word, this is a, an adjective you're looking at. The noun form is gastronomy, and it's actually a synonym with the word cuisine. So、uh, you can use either cuisine or gastronomy, but it's the、uh, practice of choosing, cooking, and eating good food. And they'll often talk about traditional Italian、uh, gastronomy or traditional Italian cuisine. So you can、uh, substitute those words for each other. You can. Yeah, if it's a phenomenon, it's one of those words we use when we can't quite describe something. I think it's an interesting word,、uh, but it's something that is kind of unusual. It's been observed, and it's something that we don't quite know why it's happening, but it is. It is indeed. So that's the dish we're talking about, paella. It has、yeah. gone from being a poor man's dish to having worldwide fame. Now, originating from Valencia, which is in southeastern Spain, paella traditionally contained rice as well as whatever meat and vegetables that were readily available.、Mm -hmm. So it originated from Valencia. Again, that's a city, a region in Spain. And to originate means something has a specific beginning. That's where It came from. That's right. I wanted to mention too, guys.、Uh, you can also say originating in something. So it came from Valencia,、uh, which is in the southeastern part of Spain, and it traditionally had rice, but it also had. Whatever meat and vegetables you could find that were just on hand or readily available. If something's readily available, it's really close. You don't have to work to get it. It's right in front of you. I、uh, I I hear this description and I think of an American dish we call goulash, which goulash. is just we put everything in there. It's kind of leftovers, and then you put them all together, and that's what you eat.、Um, We used to laugh at mom. We don't want goulash again, mom. But、oh. it's kind of a mixture of potatoes or some sort of starch. Here they're using rice, and then you've got meat and vegetables that you have on hand or readily available. And they whipped it up, and the rest is history. We'll talk some more about pie in just a couple of seconds, but we're going to take a break right now. So please stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hi everyone, my name is Jenny. Today we're looking at the third section. 好，今天的主角是西班牙。西班牙呢，其实它有它最有名的建筑，它的文化。不过我们今天的重点是在它的美食。那谈到西班牙的美食，当然它有它特殊的吸引力。好，我们就先来看这个字。当吸引力这个名词 ，appeal，appeal， appeal, 当然它是可以当动词用的。当你说 A appeals to B. 那换句话说 ，A 会吸引 B。可不可是呢？我们在这边看到的 appeal， 它是一个名词。好，那它有它特殊的吸引力。我们今天要讲的有两道美食，一个是很有名的西班牙炖饭，另外一个叫做杜龙糖。我们就先来看今天的主角，我们要看炖饭。其实炖饭大家可能都有吃过，不过呢，谈到炖饭，它其实也代表的西班牙文化里面的这种多元色彩，还有它的温暖。那我们来看这边这句话，有一点特别的，就是有一个很难的字叫 gastronomic。Gastronomic phenomenon. He mentions that talking about the Spanish food, it is really a phenomenon of food. We often talk about cooking the food. We use this word because it comes from its noun gastronomy. We look at gastronomy. If your nose is gnomy, it means cooking the food. We are talking about a phenomenon. Gastronomic, so gastronomic phenomenon 讲的就是美食奇迹。那既然要谈美食奇迹，我们先看这个炖饭的来源。它其实呢，在传统上，它本来的意思呢，就是它一定要放米，然后呢，再加上你随时旁边啊、呃、有的肉类啊、蔬菜啊，然后呢，以前的人在田里面很。饿的时候就把这些东西摆在一起，就变成我们今天吃的炖饭。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
welcome back, guys. We're talking about Spanish dishes from the country of Spain that you don't want to miss because, wow, are they tasty! We've been talking about paella, which is、uh, they're saying it's a symbol of the country's greatest characteristics or features: passion, variety, color, and social warmth. People love to get together and eat meals together. I've noticed that's one of、uh, Taiwan's characteristics:、uh, gathering together and、uh, being with friends and a family and eating a good meal. Uh, indeed, and I think they also have different eating habits in Spain, like when they eat,、yeah. they have very long lunch hours and stuff like that, and they all stay up pretty late, well up、uh, to midnight,、uh, one o'clock. It's very, very common there. Yeah, they eat dinner like at eight thirty nine p.m., which is not good for your diet, I must say. <laughs>、uh, according to our research, yes, but、uh, that's a tradition that's、uh, not going to die anytime soon.、No. So if you go to Spain, you should accustom yourself accordingly, but. Again, we're talking about paella,、mm -hmm. and again, it originated from Valencia. It was for peasants, basically,、uh -huh. and of course, you need to have rice in there. But they would also add meats and other vegetables that were readily available, or these ingredients were on hand. And workers would cook this dish、mm -hmm. in the fields to make a filling yet nutritious meal to sustain themselves for the laborious hours ahead of them. So, yeah, they didn't have time to come in from the fields back into the farm. Farmhouse or something、mm -hmm. like that. They'd stay right out there and make the food right there. It would be filling, which means after you eat it, you're full. You don't feel hungry anymore. Chibala, and、mm -hmm. it's also nutritious. Yeah. So it's got it's got your carbohydrates, your protein, your vitamins, your minerals, stuff like that, all in this dish. Yeah, and it helped these workers who were out there in the fields just have the physical energy and stamina to continue. If something sustains you, it strengthens you. It supports. You and we'll use it literally, as in food sustains our bodies, gives us our bodies energy. But we can also use it more figuratively.、Uh, I have a great、uh, family and friend system. They sustain me.、Uh, they help me get through whatever challenges I have in life. Well, this is a nutritious and、uh, filling meal that helps these guys get the energy that they need to continue working out there in the fields. We're calling the hours they work out there laborious. Laborious. laborious is a word that, when you see it, you think of, "Oh, this is hard labor. It's not easy." So it takes a long time, or it takes a lot of energy. Now, in the third, well, that's fourth paragraph, isn't it? Fourth paragraph.、Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here we've got a proper paella is cooked in a pan called a patella.、Uh, it looks like patella. Which、yeah. is, I think, of the name of a bone in our bodies, in English. This is pateya, and it's a flat pan that really is needed to get that crispy rice bottom that、uh, the paellas are famous for. It's、uh, Latin, which a lot of the European languages are based in the ancient、uh, language of Latin.、Uh, it's a flat pan, and that's where the famous dish gets its name. Mm. Exactly, patella,、mm. uh, patella, as we describe the kneecap, as you said. But in this particular case, it refers to a shallow pan, and this large shallow pan allows for all of the ingredients to be pan seared in one layer and ensures that the rice absorbs all of the stock's savory flavors. Now, I'm not much of a chef myself. This term, pan seared, I'm guessing as an amateur chef that it means that、uh, you basically can. Fry everything at once. You don't have to really flip it over and stuff like that,、mm, like a pancake、no. or something. No, when you sear something, think of a steak. If you、uh, are eating a steak and watching the cooks, you'll notice that they put the steak usually on a very hot flame. It could be in a pan. It could be on the grill. But they cook that that outside layer at a very high heat so it caramelizes, and then they put it in the oven. Okay.、Yeah. Okay. So that's a. A particular cooking technique、yeah. here, just one layer there to ensure that the rice absorbs all of the flavors. To ensure just means to guarantee, to make sure something is the case. To absorb means to suck it in. So they've got the rice there, and it's also got the stock there, which would、uh -huh. be the other ingredients in a kind of liquid with the oil and stuff.、Mm -hmm. uh, they want the rice to suck it all up, to absorb it all, and these are savory flavors. If something is savory, that means 
means it's very, very tasty. It's also referring to like a, a different kind of、uh, sense or different kind of taste. Like、uh, we've got, we've got、uh, sweet, salty, sour, and then savory. Savory, yeah.、Mm. Savory is usually describing、uh, main dishes, right? It would never be dessert. Described. I think of it as salty, a little salty, and a little mmm.、Mm. Uh, umami is the word that they use in Japan for that. So,、okay. although modern day paella contains various fresh ingredients,、uh, not just you know food from the meal before. Sometimes they actually put fresh ingredients. Real Spanish paella must include. Some、uh, some items to be a real paella. Rice is one of them. It must be in the dish, or it's not a paella.、Mm. So don't forget the rice. Rice being the most crucial one of the essential items we're talking about. If it's crucial, it's vital. You must have it. You need it in order to survive. Here, you you don't have a paella if you don't have rice. Right, and we're talking about the grains of rice,、uh, fan li, grains、mm. of rice. So the grains for an authentic paella are plump, which means they're kind of fat, like、mm. somebody who's overweight. And uh, you, these uh, grains of rice can easily soak up all the important stock, or the all important stock rather. So this, of course, is talking about rice used in an authentic dish of paella. If it's authentic, that means it's the real thing. It's not a Copy. It's not an imitation. It's not some something from a fast food restaurant or from a convenience store. Yeah, we'll often talk about finding an authentic、uh, restaurant that serves Korean food or、uh, Thai food. But sometimes you'll walk into the restaurants and it's the the cook is not Korean or Thai.、Mm. Uh, so it's interesting. Yeah. So to get that real, authentic, true paella, you've got to have some of these ingredients. Tom talked about stock. Stock is great because what you do is you、uh, cook a liquid with different things like vegetables, onions, carrots.、Uh, sometimes you'll put meat in there. I have chicken stock where I put the whole chicken in and just、okay. boil it to get that wonderful flavor.、Um, that's what this is, and to soak up. Yeah, you can soak up a lot of things. You can soak up liquid if you're a sponge that we use to wash our dishes,、uh, or a towel soaks up the water when you're toweling yourself off, drying yourself after a shower. But you can also figuratively soak up a lot of、uh, knowledge, a lot of wisdom by going to school or talking to people that you trust who have a lot of life experience. And soak up is basically the same meaning as the word absorb、mm. that we learned、True. in the previous paragraph here. So the rice, the grains of rice have to be plump so they can soak up all that stock there. It's the all important stock. It's a very important stock. If you don't have that stock, you just can't have a proper authentic dish of paella. And traditional meats include rabbit, chicken, snails, and spicy Spanish salchicha or sausage. Yum. So these are all different kinds of meats. Uh, meat usually is a non-count noun, but here we're talking about different kinds of meat, so you can make that countable: rabbit, chicken,、uh, pork, beef,、mm -hmm. etc. Those are all different kinds of meats. Yeah, and we've got onions and garlic. They're a must.、Um, I think that's the basic、uh, part of any Spanish dish. You've got to have the onions and garlic. You've got artichoke hearts, which are hard to find here in Taiwan.、Mm. I think I've seen an artichoke for sale once,、okay. um, but I want the canned or the bottled artichoke hearts. Oh,、right. I love those. That that flavor is great. And red bell peppers. Um, they'll often use the yellow bell peppers as well. They love colorful food in sure, Spain. Sure, sure. That's one part of the color we mentioned that before.、Yeah. And we've also got fresh peas, lemons, and beans. They're typically、mm. included as garnishes. A garnish is like something that's added to a dish more for decoration、mm -hmm. rather than eating. Although, if you want to, I suppose you could eat it. Like parsley, for example, is a common garnish in American food. Yeah, we've got saffron, which is really expensive. So they just add a little bit of that to give it the color. Yeah, it's a vibrant yellow, yellow orange, more yellow than orange color, and it gives it an extra flavor. You'll find that in a lot of Indian meals as well. And the so, last paragraph, last paragraph here, yeah. yes, it sort of sums things up. Once、yeah. a humble food for peasants and farmers, today palate pleasing paella、mm. has become an international sensation. If it's palate pleasing, it's just a、Yummy. very, a very <laughs> pleasant experience to eat. A sensation is just a physical feel. 
feeling,、uh, just a, a sensation in terms of taste and senses and stuff like that.、Yeah. And it is even honored worldwide on March 27th, which was a couple of months ago. You missed it, but in any case, it's National Paella Day on March 27th, and that celebrates the classic dish in all its glory. So、Wonderful. if you're in Spain, that's a good time to be there. But、uh, hey, they serve this dish all year round. That brings us to the end of our explanation. Here comes our Chinese teacher. 好，我们继续来看。接下来呢，啊，唐顿饭它其实呃来源之外，我们还要知道为什么叫这个字。巴耶拉这个西班牙字哦，它基本上呢比较有趣的就是它的来源跟。用来煮这个炖饭的这种器具有关，因为其实呢，它就是来自于 b a d e l l a 那 b a d e l l a 这个字，它是一个拉丁字，它指的就是平底锅。好，那我们看到这个句子里面哦，它用在 b a d e l l a 的后头逗点，再用 which。注意到，当然你只要是专有名词，你后面呢要修饰这个专有名词。补充说明用的话，一定是非限定用法，所以你要有一个逗点。好，那提到它就是平底锅，那所以说，嗯，今天我们叫炖饭用这个字啊，巴耶拉是有道理的。那不过呢，它这个原来既然叫平底锅，它是一种大型的浅平锅。那这样的锅呢，有什么好处？就是你所有的食材。摆在上面，铺在上面，就会很均匀的受热。每个米饭呢，都吸收到了汤汁，这样煎烤的这种做法，当然这就是我们今天说“炖饭”这个字的来源。不过，这里还要注意到有几个地方。第一个呢，就是这里有个复合形容词 “pan seared”。我们知道。Pan 当然就是指平底锅喽。那 sear s e a r 这本来是一个动词，它表示煎，哎，就是跟炸有点不同，比较像我们中式料理所谓的煎。那这个 seared。e d 加上去就表示是一个过去分词，所以你名词后面加一个过去分词，这种复合形容词其实在英文里面常见。那这个之外，我们可以随便举一个例子哦，比较常见的，比如说你谈到，哎，这是 handmade， 是手工制的，哎 ，hand。名词 made 过去分词，或者是呃更简单的 heartbroken， 你说心碎了，哎，这个前面的 heart 是名词，后面的 broken 是过去分词，这都是类似的一种造字的原则。好，那我们再往下读，下面说到了，哎，这个炖饭啊，嗯，我们今天吃这个炖饭呢，当然里面最重要的元素。就是米，所以他后面看到这里 ，rice being the most crucial one， 这个句构也很特别，因为呢，这用到的又是一种独立分词片语。前面谈的啊是西班牙炖饭，后面这里谈的后半句是米。那主词不同之后，本来是讲 and rice is。The most crucial one. 你把它的连接词去掉，然后保留主词 ，be 动词变成 v i n g， 就是 being。好，这个文法要特别注意。好，那我们呢，再往下看，下面当然还提到这个料理呢，它里面放了哪些的材料。那最后就说到说，这个食物啊，今天啊、嗯，它。可以说是一个轰动国际的美食，所以我们甚至有一个西班牙炖饭日。好，提到它是国际美食，它是什么样的美食 ？Palate pleasing， 这个 palate pleasing 又是一个所谓的复合形容词。那这次你看到的是个名词加 v i n g。好，我们也知道英文里面像 fun feeling， 或者是 heart breaking， 或者是 peace loving， 就是类似这样的结构。好，我们的讲解就到这边结束。我们下次见。Thanks for joining us, guys. That's just day one of our two-day unit on food. We're focusing on Spanish dishes. In our next program, we're going to be talking about a special dessert, so you don't want to miss it. Thanks for joining us for English Digest. I'm Stephanie, and I'm Tom. Goodbye. Bye.